Hey folks, it's Yellow Sheldon. It's uh, like 100 degrees where I'm at right now. Um, I am in the sun-baked, hellish death zone known as the bike shop after hours when the AC gets turned off and uh, I am full of Mexican food. We do a thing called Christmas in July. You know, recycled cycles. Actually, this is the first year we've done it, but it seems to make a whole lot more sense because you're usually uh, pretty skint in the wintertime. You don't have very much influx of cash, so it makes a lot more sense to do your big, huge, expensive Christmas party in the summertime. Yeah, it's so hot, and I am so dehydrated. I'm just becoming Mr. Vascular. Um, <laughs> are you ready for a video that is filled with hearsay? and has zero information whatsoever? I knew you'd say yes. So, if you've been collecting old mountain bike stuff for a while, I am sure you've seen an ad for hydraulic rim brakes. Now, the hydraulic rim brake has made a bit of a resurgence in, in recent years. Um, you know, Shimano and SRAM and Magura and Rotor all have uh, hydraulic rim brake offerings. And so when I say hydraulic rim brake, basically what I'm referring to is the, I'm gonna try to focus this. Yeah, that doesn't work. Just like a hydraulic disc brake, you have a master cylinder, you are pushing a piston using the brake lever, and it is pushing fluid all the way down a hose, and it's affecting a change usually a pinching of a caliper onto a rotor. Now, sometimes this rotor is your rim in the case of all these brakes we're about to talk about. Sometimes the rotor is what we colloquially call a rotor uh, in disc brakes, which is a small metal disc. Um, you know, they're both doing the same thing. Y'all are pinching a goddamn spinning wheel. So, as you can see with this one, it's kind of interesting. It's got rubber pads on it. Um, this, we used to have a big bucket of Magura bits and bobs and pits and poodles, and we no longer have it, or at least I can't find it. So the only one I could find is the one that I was gonna put on a Frankenstein commuter bike of mine, because this one has actually been converted to work on a road bike. <laughs> These really almost crudely made clamps have clamped the usual braking pods that you would find in a Magura mountain bike brake. And this central yoke here actually acts as a mounting point so you can mount it onto a road fork. So I thought that was really neat. It doesn't need to be bled. It's got some pad life left to it. So I thought, what the hell, I'm gonna give it a try. Ooh. So, most people, when they think of hydraulic rim brakes, they think of Magura. Uh, at least, I mean, maybe if they're under 18, they probably think, uh, oh yeah, everyone does that. But no, like the OGs, you all consider these boys, these bod boys, Magura, just frickin' focus. There you go, right there. Uh, these are the Hydro Stop Mountains. Um, they were definitely not the first. Uh, in fact, if you reference the, um, well, I was going to say the patent office, but rather if you go into Google Patents and search for hydraulic bicycle brake and go back far enough, you'll find that in the early 70s, uh, a fellow by the name of Mathhauser, and yes, I believe it is the same Mathhauser who made the um, proverbial best brake pads ever. You know, if you, if you got cool stop brake pads, you know, they're red. They're, uh, they have uh, the addi addition of iron oxide powder, which gives them their red color. Um, Mathauser was the very, very first to introduce uh, this mineral into the brake pads, causing the performance, especially the wet performance, to go up. So you can still sort of get that. And from what I understand, Scott Mathauser, they, Mathauser later became Scott Mathauser. Um, they're going to be making them again. So that's kind of cool with the, the OG recipe. So, Magura, uh, European engineering, uh, they are generally done quite well. 
I had some trials bikes that had these on them. Um, I've had a couple mountain bikes that have had these on them. Uh, and don't, whatever people say about them, about how they'll crush your rims, they're so powerful. Um, I think not. Use them with impunity. You can still get the, the pads, which, cleverly enough, they're just these little inserts. That's, uh, that's all they do. They just snap in like that. You know what we're gonna try? We're gonna try an alternate lighting source so that you can really see the ugly trash that I am trying to peddle you. Look at this. This is a gift from my ex's uh, father-in-law. Ooh, I've got complex, complex lighting. So, here's the deal. Oh, I'm trying a different camera tonight, so if the quality is fucked, just, just bear with me. You guys know I'm a piece of garbage. I'm trying my best. So, what kicked this video off is that we have had an IBC, which is Innovated, Innovative Bicycle Components, IBC. We have had an IBC hydraulic rim brake for quite some time now in the museum case. And it, as far as we can tell, was actually the first mountain brake that used hydraulic fluid to, oh, do you hear that? Squirm, squirm, to push some pads. Um, I said this is what was going to be full of hearsay, and uh, I wasn't kidding. That looks terrible. I'm giving up on that. Here's the deal. There's basically no information about these brakes on the internet. And this is rare. You can't find anything about these on Mombat. You can't find anything about these brakes on Sheldon Brown. You can find one scan of one page of one print ad from a little bit later in the company's history. which I will provide for you thusly. Push versus pull. Here's why pushing fluid through Mathauser hydraulic brakes is better than pulling a cable through traditional brakes. Blah, 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 blah. One thing that's interesting is Redmond, Washington. So I just want to point out that these are from our backyard. This is interesting and wonderful because Although we had a production version of this brake, which still functions. Um, and I want to, you know, I want to point out the complexity of this. You have the ability to raise and lower, and I believe, yes, flip your pads up, down, left, right. You also have the ability to narrow the gap between them so you can I guess ostensibly fit them on any fork or rear frame, uh, rear uh, canty mounts on any frame. And I think that this is a quick release. Again, not knowing anything about these, we're just going through it together. These are rarer than rare. Look at that. Arm swings up, you can take your wheel out, arm swings down. This handy dandy thumb screw allows you to lock it back in place. So why am I doing this video? You know. I don't know shit about these, and usually I'll try to get at least a modicum of information before I try to post a video. Well, there's no information on these. At first I thought, well, the guy was from up here. Maybe I'll hunt down his name, and what I'll do is I will uh, find him and call him and talk to him about these breaks. I can't even figure out if the guy who designed these is, uh, what is his name, Alan Mathauser um, of Mathauser fame, or if he's a different guy who then licensed this technology to Mathauser. You know, again, the patent numbers, uh, specifically patent number 4391353A through D, you can look it up if you'd like, They're, they all belong to Mathauser. All of those, and, and, and here's the funny thing, none of them are patents for this device. Every single one of them is a patent for stuff like the Mathauser Super Brake, which was an attempt at a, a hydraulic road brake, like a road caliper. 
And these patents, I've looked them all up, they are, they're all applicable only to the early Mauthauser work in the late 70s, uh, well, like mid to late 70s, uh, regarding hydraulic, um, like, road brakes for touring bikes, basically. So, I don't know how this works. I don't know when this comes into play. What I do know is that we had a very old mountain bike come through, and the gentleman said, You'll, you guys will want these. I'm just donating this bike. Uh, and we said, yeah, IBCs, they're cool. Um, he said, no, no, these IBCs, these are like first and second generation prototype IBCs from the guy up in Redmond. Uh, they were built and given to me and my wife, and we tested them. So I don't know. When I, I hear a lot of this bullshit. You know, over the years, you hear a lot of, oh, this is one of a kind. This is a prototype one. And you find out that it was just like the European or Japanese variant, or they had modified it or whatever. However, in this case, I am, I am liable to believe this gentleman. One, the locale. Same place as, same place as the original company, okay? Number two, this is important. Front and rear brakes didn't match, and there are significant differences between them and the final product brake that we have had an example of. So this is the brake that made it to market. This is the quote-unquote prototype brake that looks the closest. I will go through the differences as far as I see them. So difference number the one, every IBC brake I've ever seen that was available for co commonly available for public consumption used braided steel lines like these and bear in mind it's not like you can just rehose these things these predate like off the shelf hose kits um, and plus all of the hydraulic fittings they are special they are proprietary to this brake so the next thing i say it's not insignificant it's actually in my opinion one of the things that convinces me that these are strange prototype brakes. So number one, this has sort of a chintzy, almost like proof of concept plastic hose. Um, it functions. Uh, it's cracked. You can almost see that that was the reason they probably went with the braided line. Number two, and actually, you know, so if you're the guy who invented these and you're watching this video, which, again, is never going to happen, could you, like, leave a text uh, comment in the video below? Let me know where I'm wrong, how I'm fucking this up, and I also want to know what was the impetus behind making these breaks. A uh, little early, a little complicated, and from all I've heard, they, they really leaked quite a bit. But, I mean, genius, beautiful kit, kudos to you, sir, for making these. <laughs> So, difference number two. I believe the uh, brake bridge here is made from magnesium. I could be wrong, but from the coloration and also the way that it's corroding, it's corroding in a very interesting way that I don't typically see from plain aluminum. And in a moment, I'm gonna show you the other brake, which was on the exact same bike, which if there were chemicals or forces that were subjecting this brake bridge to corrosion, I would expect to see them in identical quantity on this other brake. So this brake has really bad corrosion, the likes of which you generally only see on magnesium components. So moving on, this is the one that is very, very different. This is sort of the special one. We again, again, we have this sort of generic plastic hydraulic hose. It's very thick, it's very large, it's almost six millimeters. It wouldn't have really fit on, on any bike. You would have had to have custom mounts for it or just zip tied it in place. Number two, the master cylinder, completely different design. Rough hewn, CNC machined, it looks like it was a one-off. The only thing it references, there's no branding, there's no branding of any kind on this at all. However, it does have 
the a sticker telling you which patents it's covered under. Another thing. So the levers are completely different. The, I don't know if you, this is actually one of the cooler things about these brakes. Do you see how they've put a sliding gate along the clamp here? So this is dovetailed and you can actually slide the attachment point on these, uh, it seems like about an inch side to side. So you could have adjusted where your brake lever sat. Um, that's pretty neat. The quote unquote prototype version does not have that whatsoever. It has this silver bent piece of sheet metal to clamp onto the handlebar. Difference number three or four, or whatever we're on. Although, this clamp is the same up top, this central yoke. Um, it is very, very different down here. So if we look, look at that. Look at the difference between these two. The finished one, these parts are cleanly machined. I can't see any tool paths on these. And these, this shape is identical to the one that would become available to the public, you can see here. This MFR, God, look at how much I'm sweating. It, it, I think I'm gonna die if I don't stop this video soon because it's like 105 degrees, but check it out. This thing uses these crude nylock nuts in this channel. Uh, the channel itself has been enlarged and modified. You can see that the original, the original machining that they've done, they actually fucked it up a little bit and they had to slightly dress the inside of where this goes onto the frame on both sides. Uh, also, you can very clearly see, very clearly see the machine paths where they had machined this part. So no cleanup afterwards. Um, anywho, I thought this was really neat. I also wanted to make a record of this. You know, that's actually why I'm filming this in 4K as well. I know it sucks, the lighting sucks, but you get what you get when it's 105 degrees. There are so many things on the internet which us bike nerds are going to look back on and wish that we had access to. We wanna, we're gonna wish that we had high res stills and photos we're going to, I mean, the old guard barely had the internet when they started cataloging this stuff. And I have found many, many deficits in, in their record keeping. And I'm not talking shit, like they did a great job. But I want someone, rather than what I had to do, which was like Google for two hours through German websites to find even the tiniest modicum of information on these. Uh, most people didn't even know if they used dot fluid or mineral oil. Uh, for the record, it seems like they use mineral oil. Um, look at this. You may not know how these work. You may not uh, hear me read you the manual out loud in four different languages. What you will have is three different generations of this brake, as well as high res stills and descriptions of how they're put together, what the pad holders look like, what the hardware looks like and what order it's in. And just maybe you find it interesting. Um, I'm dying, yellow Sheldon out.